Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Victor Escalon, Regional Director for DPS South Texas. Thank you so much for being here today. My goal today on this, uh, this conference, this press conference, is to give you a snapshot where we're at today. This incident happened on Tuesday, May 24th. So there's a lot of information, a lot of moving parts. We have a lot of people involved in this investigation. I'm going to give you a summary of what happened. But before I do that, I was able to make it here during the event on May 24th. Same with a lot of other law enforcement officers that came to this, to this, this event, this critical incident. I got to see the victims. I got to see the officers. I got to see the community members. It is, it is so hard. It is very, it's hard to take, it's, tra it's traumatic. We're all, we're all hurting inside. We're hurting inside for the community members in Uvalde, Texas. We're hurting inside with our local partners that have, to, that have to live here and work here every day. The victims, the family members, we feel for them. I'm a father. I can't go home tonight, hug my, my, my kids. That hurts. The members behind me are family members, their kids. It's tough. It's tough, it's hard, but that gives us the motivation to move on, to do, do good work for Uvalde, Texas, for the victims. We speak for the victims and we take that dearly. Before I get started, Texas Rangers are leading this investigation. But we can't do it alone. We cannot do it alone. We have ATF, FBI, CBP, Border Patrol, Uvalde County District Attorney's Office. The list goes on and on and on. But the agencies I told you are the, pro are the, the main ones that are assisting with this investigation. We want to know what happened recreate the scene that takes days that takes hours that takes time a lot of information then we have to do a lot of interviews so we just started we started on tuesday today's thursday we're still grabbing a lot of information we also what's important to us is why why did he do this why did he do this who is this man the suspect, we're gonna find out. With all the different agencies that are involved, we're working every angle that's available. And we won't stop until we get all the answers that we possibly can. So again, I wanna thank these men and women that are behind us supporting the DPS and the Rangers. So, there's a lot of information I'm gonna give you. There's some new information as of Tuesday that I wanted to clear up, that we want to clear up, that's been pushed out. We'll continue to have updates in the coming days once the information is, 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 is obtained and we're able to confirm and cooperate that. We wanna make sure we're pushing out the right information. Early on, when we came in, we were, receiving a lot of information from a lot of different locations. That's a baseline. You start there. We made some reports, but since then, we started doing interviews. We started working the crime scene, so we're cooperating. I want to share some of that. It's a small piece of information right now, but it'll grow within days. So please, thank you for being here and being patient with us. It means a lot. On Tuesday, May 24th at 11.28, suspect just west of here wrecks his vehicle, pickup truck that he took from his grandmother. He had just shot his grandmother in the face. She's alive. She's stable at this point. At 11.28, he's sitting there at the Bartage. He jumps out the passenger side of the truck. According to witnesses, he's got a long arm, rifle, 
in a bag. Later, we find out it's ammunition. He walks around, he sees two witnesses at the funeral home across the street from where he wrecked. He engages and fires towards them. He continues walking. He continues walking towards the school. He climbs a fence. Now he's in the parking lot shooting at the school multiple times. 1140, he walks into the west side of Robb Elementary. According to reports, video we have obtained from outside, inside, and again, we're still combing through that. So bear with us. Multiple rounds, numerous rounds are discharged in the school. We're trying to do get a number. We're in the process of analyzing that video. Four minutes later, local police departments, Uvalde Police Department, the Independent School District Police Department are inside, make an entry. They hear gunfire, they take rounds, they move back, get cover. And during that time, they approach where the suspect is at. According to the information I have, he went in at 1140. He walks, and I'm gonna approximate 20 feet, 30 feet, he makes a right. He walks into the hallway, he makes a right, walks another 20 feet, turns left into a schoolroom, into a classroom that has doors open in the middle. Officers are there, the initial officers, they receive gunfire. They don't make entry initially because of the gunfire they're receiving. But we have officers calling for additional resources. Everybody that's in the area, tactical teams. We need equipment, we need specialty equipment, we need body armor, we need precision riflemen, negotiators. So during that time, that they're making those calls to bring in help to solve this problem and stop it immediately. They're also evacuating personnel, not say personnel, students, teachers. There's a lot going on, a lot complex situation. They're measuring, they're measuring. Approximately an hour later, U.S. Border Patrol Tactical teams arrive, they make entry, shoot and kill the suspect. But you also had a Zavala County deputy and Uvalde Police Department that made entry and killed the suspect. Immediately, immediately, numerous officers now it turns into a rescue operation. How do we save these children? How do we save these children? Some made it out. We don't have a hard number yet, but that was a goal. And then continuing making the area safe continue. It's a lot of moving parts afterwards. But during, they were taking gunfire, negotiations, and developing a team to make entry to stop them. I'll take a few questions. And, I, and again, look, I summary, one more thing I forgot to mention that, that I want to clear up that came out early on. It was reported that a school district police officer confronted the suspect that was making entry. Not accurate. He walked in unrestructed initially. So from the grandmother's house to the bar ditch to the school, into the school, he was not confronted by anybody. To clear the record on that. Four minutes later, law enforcement are coming in to solve this problem. Step by. Step. 
So, just want to clear that up. That's very important. And again, this will happen as we move forward. So, thank you. I'll take a few questions. How are you able to get in if it was a school that's supposed to be locked during the school day? So, so right now, you know, during the investigation, it appears it was unlocked. So we're going to look at that and try to cooperate that as best as we can. How many gunshots were there? Do you know why he was unlocked? I do not. Hey, please, one at a time, and we'll, we'll address as many questions as we can. So let, let me finish this question. One at a time, announce your name, and announce your network, okay? Let's be respectful, please. My name is Josh Margo, and how do you know why it was unlocked? So, Josh. You know, thank you for the question. So right now, we have, it appears it was unlocked. Like I said, it goes back to the investigation. It takes time. Uh, we will find out as much as we can why it was unlocked, or maybe it was locked. But right now, it appears it was unlocked. So thank you. Yes, sir. You say at one point when he was inside there, among the things you were attempting negotiation, was he responding to negotiation? And in that period of time, was there continued gunfire? So during that time, right now, according to the, the information we have, the, the majority of the gunfire was in the beginning. In the beginning. I say numerous, more than 25. I mean, it was a lot of gunfire in the beginning. During the negotiations, there wasn't much gunfire other than trying to keep the officers at bay. But that could change depending as once we analyze the video. But right now, according to the information, he did not respond. Director, so, I'm Yamas with NBC News. My, my question is this, was there a school officer on campus and was that school officer armed because that's what we've been told? So at this time, no, no. There was not an officer readily available armed, no. Was there an officer? No, no nothing. I can't answer that yet. I'll circle back with you again. As we do that investigation, we have all these questions we want to answer so, but I'll, I'll get back with you, sir. There, there's a 12-minute gap. There's a 12-minute gap from when he, brought, he crashes his truck to when he enters the school. 12 minutes. What happened in that 12 minutes? So you got to understand, 11.30 is the information we have at this point that we can confirm. 11.30 a.m., the PD gets a, we got a crash and a man with a gun. And then you have responding officers. That's what it is. If it's 12 minutes from 11.30 to 11.40, that's the information we have right now. Look, at the end of the day, our job is to report the facts and have those answers. We're not there yet. Over here, over here. When was the first 911 call? When was the first 911 call? Say it again. When was the first 911 call into officials? How long so, did it take to respond to the scene? So right now, the first 911 call is at 11.30. I will get the time what it took to respond. So we'll have that answer. Yes. Could there's a lot of possibilities. There's a lot, a lot of possibilities. Until 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 we receive an interview because there was numerous officers at that classroom. Numerous. Once we interview all those officers, what they were thinking what they did, why they did it, the video, the residual interviews, we'll have a better idea. Could anybody have gone there sooner? You gotta understand, small town. Yeah, people from Eagle Pass, from Del Rio, Laredo, San Antonio, responding to a small community. Why is it on the information you have so far, sir? Uh, should the officers have gone in sooner? Should they have waited for those tactical teams or should they have gone right in? That's a tough question. That's a tough question. Again, it goes back, our job is to report the facts. Report the facts, and later we can answer those questions. I don't have enough information to answer that question just yet. So, one more, one more question, please. Is it, is it accurate that eyewitnesses and potentially parents of the students were urging uh, the police to go in while you were waiting for a tactical SWAT team, even that some parents were asking to borrow police armor so they could make a counter assault on the school? I have heard that information, but we have not verified that yet. So, what, what, what part of that verified? we have not verified is that, is that a true statement or not, or is it just rumor out there? So you got to understand, we're getting a lot of information. We're trying to track down and see what is true. We want to vet it. 
That's all I have for questions. Thank you so much. Can you explain what best practice is? Can you explain what best practice is? Hold on. So, so look, we appreciate the questions. Okay. I got you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Behind that, you, you guys have said that he was barricaded. Can you explain to us how he was barricaded and why you guys cannot reach that door? So I have taken all your questions into consideration. We will be doing updates. We will be doing updates to answer those questions. What is your name? Shimon. Shimon. I hear you. Because we've been given a lot of bad information. So why don't you clear all of this up now and explain to us how it is that your officers who are in there for an hour, yes, rescuing people, but yet no one was able to get inside that room. Shimon, we will we will circle back with you. We want to answer all your questions. We want to give you the why. That, that's that's our job. So give us time. I'm taking all your questions. I'm taking them back to talk to the team. And uh, look, thank you for being here. Have a we'll talk soon. We'll, we'll talk soon.